Investors really should consider international fixed income as a part of any portfolio uh, for several reasons. First, it is a true diversifier to many of the traditional sources of returns that investors find. When we look at the correlations, we notice that uh, international fixed income has low correlations to traditional asset classes such as credit and equity. We also, in international fixed income, have the ability to participate in returns that are linked to non-US uh, centric events. Such uh, events could be a, you know, a natural resource find, a uh, political event such as an election, uh, you know, there are other structural events such as demographic changes and cyclical events, uh, you know, like countries being at different uh, parts in their business cycle. Uh, all of that, uh, you know, provides diversified sources of returns to investors throughout a business cycle. And secondly, what I think is really important is uh, international fixed income is a growing asset class. Today, we see international fixed income at about 128 trillion uh, total between US combined and uh, international fixed income, but the international fixed income market is twice the size of the US market. Uh, back in 2000, when we looked at that uh, same breakout, international fixed income was roughly equivalent to the size of the US market itself. So for those reasons, we would think that investors should take a serious look at having this as a permanent piece of their portfolio allocations. So the global bond fund strategy has an objective and philosophy. The objective is to invest in bonds and currencies across different countries uh, to create a well-diversified portfolio um, that can take advantage of different countries' economic and market cycles. The philosophy is embedded in the macro research here at Doubleline, and we combine that with the bottom-up sovereign research process that the Global Bond Fund team does. And we believe that combining these two processes through portfolio construction and active risk management can help generate superior risk-adjusted returns. If you invest in the Global Bond Fund strategy, your, your portfolio will consist of predominantly government bonds denominated in its own local currency, and the bulk of these bonds will be uh, non-US investments or issued outside the United States. We consider this strategy as a high investment grade strategy. Um, most of the securities will be investment grade rated, um, though we do have a 25% basket for high yield securities or non-investment grade rated securities. Uh, because of this, we think that um, this portfolio should perform well, um, the bonds should perform well in periods of risk off market sentiment, um, though the currency could ex exhibit some volatility um, given that really the currency is gonna be driven by uh, broad dollar trends and uh, the country's own individual idiosyncratic risks. So because of this, we can opportunistically hedge some of the foreign currency risk within the portfolio, as well as provide foreign currency overlays. The four pillars of Double Line Global Bond Strategies investment process are top-down global macro research, which is anchored by the global asset allocation meeting uh, held here at DoubleLine, shared by uh, you know, our CIO and deputy CIOs, as well as participated in by every investment member uh, in the firm. The second pillar is bottoms up fundamental research, which is conducted by analysts on our team that do a deep dive into each individual country. The third pillar is portfolio construction, where we combine the macroeconomic views and the bottoms up fundamental research to find trades with the best potential risk adjusted returns to put into the portfolio. The fourth pillar is active risk management, where we manage all current positions and potential future positions on a daily basis. The macro research process, um, so the first pillar of our investment process, is done both on a firm level and at the global team level. On the firm level, uh, this is really generated um, on an ongoing basis, but we do have it formalized on a monthly uh, meeting um, at the Global Asset Allocation Meeting, which is chaired by Jeffrey Gunlock and attended by portfolio management teams across various sectors. And within this meeting and with on an ongoing basis, we really discuss a lot of the broad macro trends. This includes anything from growth and inflation dynamics, uh, the dollar trend, the commodity trends, broad financial conditions. And we combine the global 
the, the view within the firm with our team's view as well to try to put together a portfolio uh, that will take advantage of these macro trends that we're seeing today. For our sovereign analysis, we take a standardized approach to both analysis and reporting. The factors involved in that standardized approach include a very close review of the political environment in the country, including government policies. It also includes a structural analysis of a country's fiscal and debt dynamics. And it also includes an in-depth analysis and outlook for economic growth, for inflation, for central bank policy, and for external dynamics, including the balance of payments. We believe that this standardized approach really accomplishes two things. One is it allows us to compare countries uh, across regions uh, and globally. It also allows us to better and quickly identify a country's strengths and its vulnerabilities uh, and helps us to uh, then uh, identify those drivers of risk and return. The portfolio construction process takes the macro analysis of Doubleline and combines it with the expertise of our sovereign analysts and combines that into a portfolio where these securities will take advantage of the broad macro trends that we're seeing in the environment today. Um, really, this process is an ongoing basis. Um, you know, we try to evaluate what are the drivers of return and risk within each country, and we try to evaluate which security will benefit the most, which country will benefit the most during these macro trends. This provides our security selection process, and these views are expressed in both FX and rates. When we look at the country, the first thing we really look at is uh, the politics and government, because governments are hugely important. They centralize uh, decision making and they really provide the framework for all economic and financial decisions within that economy. And then uh, we also look at growth. Uh, growth is really uh, important for economy. Uh, stability and growth really allows uh, uh, companies to operate within that economy to uh, really have stability of margins to make investment decisions. Uh, diversity of the economy is important. Uh, you want to have different sources of revenue, uh, different sources to, uh, of growth for the economy. and then. Uh, this also provides stability for uh, the investment uh, landscape as well. Uh, then we move on to inflation. Uh, really what we want to see is stability of inflation. Uh, higher inflation can be pretty destabilizing economy. It uh, really affects margins for uh, individual companies in the private sector. And uh, high inflation could uh, also push up rates potentially. This uh, makes it, uh, this potentially could uh, push up uh, borrowing costs for uh, various countries and it makes it uh, more difficult for economies to grow as a result. And uh, in reaction to both growth and inflation, uh, we have central banks. Um, that kind of growth inflation dynamic can kind of drive uh, how central banks, uh, their policy. Uh, with uh, high and higher inflation, uh, central banks, their main policy goal is to uh, provide stable prices. A uh, credible central bank will give investors comfort that uh, prices will be stable and they'll be comfortable in, uh, in uh, trying to invest in those uh, jurisdictions as well. And lastly, we look at the external balance. This is really the asset and liability position of an economy and the flows of capital in and out of the economy. Uh, persistent current account surpluses really is, means that capital is com consistently coming in the economy. And uh, persistent current account deficits can be a potential problem because it's ultimately debt that needs to be pack paid back at some point. We believe that the double line global bond strategy is differentiated across several factors. First would be the depth and experience of our team, as many of our members have uh, been through multiple market cycles in various countries and understand how not only those countries will behave economically, but also how the currency and interest rates will behave in those countries through various points in the market cycle. Another point of differentiation is the global macro research where we leverage off of all investment professionals at DoubleLine. It's our, our global macro research process is anchored by the global asset allocation meeting. And that meeting is participated in by all, me all investment members across the firm. Finally, we believe that our standardized approach to research and to uh, generating investment ideas is a final and uh, fairly significant differentiating factor for us. 
It allows us to evaluate seemingly different countries in different business cycles and identify the most appropriate trades to put the best risk-adjusted returns into the portfolio.